Yeah. Thanks for uh, getting up and coming to the talk. So uh, I was getting nervous whether I can talk today. Um, last night I was boarding a flight from JFK here, and they wouldn't let me on the flight because um, I forgot that with my Taiwanese passport, I need a visa here. So I talked them into uh, getting me onto the flight. They said the flight had Wi-Fi, and I thought, well, worst case, I'll get one of you to get into the online visa database and put my name in, right? <laughs> but what I did was uh, I, I just quickly uh, applied for visa, and they gave me a visa off the spot, online application. So I got here. Great. Okay. So um, today we're going to be talking about the Asprox gang. They were at their peak in 2014. Um, from what we know, some legal enforcement, not going to mention which entity, took action against this group. And many people in the um, end of 2014, and many people thought they have disappeared since you don't hear about Asprox anymore. For us, doing email security, 2013, 2014 was their prime, and they, a lot of people thought they disappeared. Well, we're going to be talking about today that they didn't really disappear, um, they're doing something else. But I'll share with you their tools, the asset that they have, and how they do their operation. Um, and this research is jointly done by myself and also my colleague, Sun Huang. Uh, he is a great pen tester. Story of Armorize, I started a company. I used, uh, we used to be doing web AppSec. So we did a lot of pen testing. We developed tools to compile source code and find vulnerabilities inside source code. Um, we later turned on to do malware, and the pen testing team of ours, um, uh, because we're doing malware, started to use their pen testing skill to understand, to, to help us understand more about attackers in the email space. So we don't do pen testing anymore. Uh, we're going to be giving an overview of Asprox, how they spread malware, their strategy changed from 2014 to 2016. We'll be talking about their TDS server and their command and control architecture and also the economics, how they run their black market. This group uh, of attackers, they don't hack into websites. Uh, they don't themselves steal passwords, uh, but they run a big black market and they buy a lot of uh, web admin passwords from the, black, uh, the cyber black market that they run themselves. And we'll make a conclusion. OK, so Asprox, it's a well-known family of uh, PC-based malware initially. They started to Android 2014, but it was primarily PC-based. And it's used by a single actor, Russian-speaking actor, called Asprox. They have been around for a long time, since 2007. They're still active today. Their targets, Windows and Android, since mid uh, Q3 of 2014. We've been tracking them, uh, myself and my colleagues have been tracking them since October 2014. Uh, uh, Crewpoint acquired our, uh, the company that I founded, Armorize. And so we now have colleagues at Crewpoint that have been tracking Asprox for much longer. Uh, and this research is done by the Taiwan team that I lead. And uh, we've been tracking them since 2014. They're Russian speaking. And uh, we're not going to be focused on their malware today, but we're going to be focused on their operation. Okay, so what they do is they send personalized email messages to their targets. When we say personalized, we mean that they either include URLs uh, in their messages for people to download malware, or they attach the malware themselves. Either case, every email will be different. So we call these URLs personalized URLs. So every recipient will receive a different URL or a differently obfuscated piece of malware. So every email is different. Spammed using a wide array of social engineering lures. Uh, so they have about 30 email templates covering courier pickups, coupons, gift certificates, port notifications, things like that. And they do delivery testing. So every time before they launch a campaign and their campaigns run on a daily basis, they aggressively check for all of the 
uh, domains that they use they're used to sending and all of the domains that they're using in their uh, emails in their URLs. They check again skin for you.org or avdetect.com to make sure that none of their email content, their attached malware, or the domains that they use are on any of the antivirus blacklist. So these vendors are very similar to VirusTotal, and they use the API to do that. Um, the infection chain. So the victim clicks on the URL or the attachment, downloads the file, runs the file, gets infected. Um, uh, sorry, from the clicks. So the victim clicks, the URL uh, itself will always point to a legitimate domain. It's not owned by the Asprox folks, but it's compromised. And so they have access. Once they have access to these legitimate domains, they put a PHP script on the domain. And, uh, and uh, their URLs inside the spammed emails point to these PHP scripts. So all of these are legitimate domains. Um, so when the victims click, they're redirected to a legitimate but compromised domain with an uploaded PHP file by this group. The PHP file will do some checks, and if the link is valid, then it will do a redirection. If a researcher like us tampers with the link, it will not redirect. Redirect to a TDS server. They, they wrote their own TDS server, and this TDS server uh, is PHP code, and will check for, it has, it has a big uh, database of IPs, unwanted IPs. So IPs of crawlers, robots, uh, security vendors. Uh, and data centers, they don't like data center IPs because they want to infect home users. Usually IPs from data centers mean that it's some, some type of robot, and they don't like robots. And they'll also check for the region because these, the nature of email attacks are very regional uh, because the template themselves, for example, if you're attacking North America, it's got to be English. If you're attacking Russia, it's got to be in Russian. And so they'll check. They'll check uh, whether you're coming from the right region for their campaigns. They do attack about a dozen countries, but the, e the, the URLs will indicate which country you should be coming from. So if they send an email campaign to Russia, we get the URL and we're going to hit their TDS uh, from the US, it's going to be rejected by the TDS. And it will also check for IP access count. If you're accessing from a single IP more than three or five times, you'll get rejected. If the TDS is happy, then the user gets the file, runs the file, gets infected, and um, the Asprox malware and other types of malware, we'll be talking a bit about them, will be connecting back uh, to their CNC server. So the user becomes a part of the botnet and the bots connect back to the CNC server. This group will always have. They have different malware families. They have Windows. They have Android. They have um, ad fraud malware. And but in any of these cases, they're running different CS, uh, command and control servers. But in front of the command and control servers, they always have a layer of reverse proxies by nginx, and that's why it makes uh, tracking their command and control IPs harder for us researchers. And, you know, if you're in email security, you might have seen these templates. They'll look familiar to you. These are all Asprox templates. So, um, when a victim is tricked into downloading that malicious file and runs it, it will install uh, an SMTP module on the PC. And the SMTP module will... Uh, will help Asprox in the future spam out emails. There's two ways that they spam out emails. Before end of 2015, most of their spam emails came from these infective endpoints, these infective PCs. Since beginning of 2015, most of their emails are sent from compromised websites and not endpoints because Starting from uh, beginning of 2015, they don't infect endpoints anymore. The Asprox malware spread has ended. 
the group is still operational, but they don't spread malware anymore. So, second vector injects a web shell that includes PHP mail function into compromised server. This is their ma main way of spamming right now, and that is through legitimate but compromised websites. Um, and um, so, what they do? How, how do they get these um, the access to these legitimate websites? They run a uh, underground market, and they buy in masses. Uh, cPanel administrator username and password to compromise shared hosting account, mostly WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, things like that. Um, and uh, and they also, if they infect an endpoint, they also steal that endpoint's SMTP username and password. So these are the two ways, uh, three ways actually. They also buy in, in volume SMTP username and password. So mostly buy, but also through their own infection. And uh, when it's uh, a compromised web server, they'll send out through the website's default emails, webmaster at domain name or info at domain name. The uh, assets that they own, they manage to um, have a big database divided up by region. So all of their databases, when you look into their databases, every region has a database. So Russia has one, Canada has one, US has one, things like that. Uh, more than 2 billion targeted email addresses, almost 1 million compromised SMTP accounts, more than a million PHP web shells that's been uploaded to legitimate websites that help them send out spam. Uh, and they have developed over 30 email templates. This is kind of small. Um, it's uh, it's their, one of their command and control panels where they're sending out spam. And uh, so here is the, this column is the email template that a, that a campaign would be using, uh, the redirection used, and uh, the, the interval that, uh, that this campaign will run. So it's usually 100,000 seconds. The speed, uh, so the delay between, um, between um, every batch of emails, and also the total amount of emails sent. So, so as you can see here, usually each campaign sends out 1 million to 6 million email, uh, email messages per campaign. They schedule their campaign. So different regions, um, they, would, they would send to different regions at different times. Um, and sometimes, they do waterhole. So what, what, what's in waterhole is, uh, let's say they would schedule to send um, to some, uh, let's say to the to US uh, recipients. They would send it, let's say 2 a.m. in the morning, right? So 2 a.m. in the morning, a large campaign comes in. Uh, us email security providers sees a whole bunch of emails. We go out and to check for um, the URL, and there's nothing in the URL, okay? So, so us security mechanisms like, okay, we've checked all these URLs, nothing's there. I didn't see anything bad, and it's a legitimate domain. That's 2 a.m. in the morning. 4 a.m. in the morning, they upload all of the bad stuff on there, but the email's already in your e inbox, right? Um, so what we have to do is we have to skim once when the email comes in, change, change the, the URL, to point to our email, uh, to point to our URL shortener, and when you click on it, you're parked at the shortener. We go scan again and then redirect you if we really think it's safe. Um, so, so as you can see, they um, they schedule and uh, every single campaign, and according to region. So Russia, Australia, Canada, UK, US, every region. They're sending out different times. The way they get these uh, um, uh, admin user uh, admin and passwords to the legitimate websites is through the marketplace that they run. They have over six hundred registered sellers on the marketplace. We have seen from their records 
500 of these actually made a transaction. So 500 of these uh, 1,600 sellers actually sold something to this group. Pricing, a WSO, so a backdoor PHP script to a legitimate website will sell for about half a dollar to two dollars per piece. Same with FTP, access into these websites. SMTP sells for $350 per 1,000 account. Root access sells for 20 bucks because they can do a lot with the SSH root. And then SSH user sells for five bucks. Um, it's fully automated, so if you want to sell like large volumes of cPanel access to this group, you have to upload a file according to their format. And the format is just very simple. It's uh, the website uh, URL, semicolon, the cPanel password. And they have scripts then to automatically verify every single line that you submit within that file and to calculate the amount that they need to pay you based on the number of successful logins they can do to the cPanel. So it's fully automated. Um, as a seller, you just upload your file, they'll calculate the amount. Um, and um, over the nine months that we were able to study this underground market uh, and its databases, uh, they have spent 100 uh, 135,000 USD over the period of nine months. So that's quite some money that they're actually spending. Uh, and uh, they have uh, a bookkeeping interface where they will see uh, all of, the, they list out all of the amounts that they're paying out to the sellers. So we did a study on, so how are these websites compromised? Why are there still so many um, compromised shared hosting admin passwords. Uh, so we studied these compromised websites and same as in the past, and this goes all the way back to 2008 actually, it's all um, open source vulnerabilities. So what these sellers do is when WordPress releases a new update, they would do a diff, right? And say, all right, so this is the update. So this time WordPress actually passed these, uh, actually patched a few SQL injection vulnerabilities. So then they'll, they'll, uh, they'll uh, quickly modify their script that massively scans for all of the legitimate WordPress sites out there and conduct that SQL injection. So on the day of WordPress releasing the patch, if you don't patch, then they can scan your website and automatically use that SQL injection to inject a PHP backdoor, a WS shell into your website. Um, and that, and mostly you can see, uh, we, we've studied the vulnerabilities that they use, uh, mostly Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, and WordPress, uh, plugin is what we see. Okay. Uh, so all of their URLs are personalized. So although they all point to these legitimate domains that they, that they have bought, but every single URL looks different. They frequently change the web shell PHP file names and they obfuscate and pack their malware daily. Uh, and they do delivery testing using the two vendors I've mentioned. And all of this, then they're making sure that they're almost uh, non-detectable uh, against most antivirus. Uh, and then how people like us detect them is for example, when they don't like your URL, they wrote this, uh, they wrote this uh, PHP script that redirects you to a 404 page. Well, the script is, re uh, is written by them manually, so it's not something that other people have, and it's a unique redirection mechanism. So when we're redirected this way, we just know it's ASPROX because we have their source code. So that's how we use leverage this type of Security research for our detection. Um, and um, when you're a website admin, and you'll sometimes see, okay, so I got this PHP file uh, on one in one of my directories. It's not from us, so somebody injected this piece of PHP into my website, right? So they took 
take a look at the PHP code, this is the PHP redirector that if a website is compromised, that they inject into. So what, if you open up the text file, you will see an, 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 uh, an IP address right here that they're redirecting to. Um, but this is a decoy, right? They wrote a Chinese IP there to make you think that, okay, so some, some Chinese hackers hacked into my website and put in this PHP code. Well, it's not, it's a decoy. Uh, their real IP uh, is, is obfuscated a little bit with XOR. So you wouldn't see it with a naked eye. You have to just write a little bit of script to decode it. And when you decode it, um, it's just XOR. You end up with a real Asprox IP address, and that's one of their TDS. Um, so these, okay, so up there is the domain, and here is something that we found to be interesting, and that's, uh, Every URL inside every single message has a UUID. And we found out that that's actually encrypted with uh, Base64 first and the AES. And when we I AES decrypt it, um, it actually has a schema. So they encrypt, well, they embed within that UUID uh, the sender ID, so the bot, the unique bot that actually helped them send this message the URL ID, the database ID, they have about a dozen databases, each database containing email targets of a certain region. So the database ID tells us the region that's been targeted. The mail ID is actually the victim's email address, hash. So, um, and so by comparing the unique mail IDs, we know that they have more than a billion emails. And, and this corresponds to the numbers that we saw on their command and control panel. Um, so you can know quite a lot from decoding, uh, decrypting that uh, AES encrypted UUID inside their personalized URLs. If the PHP is happy with the URL, it will then redirect to a TDS, as we've mentioned. And uh, the redirection to the TDS, the URL looks like this. It will carry over the, um, the UUID and it will also give the user agent. And uh, the user agent is important uh, because they started to send, to redirect differently. So the TDS will redirect you um, to to a Windows malware, if you come from Windows, will redirect you to an Android APK download. If you're coming from Android, and it will not redirect, it will serve you nothing when you're coming from a Mac. Um, so the TDS will redirect to download uh, zip files, and it will log, it does extensive logging. It will ban unwanted downloads based on blacklist. And so uh, it, it have vulnerabilities, uh, and that's why we were able to study them. It will also, you see in their code, they use this keyword called abuse a lot, right? They don't like security researchers abusing their services. So every time they find abuse, uh, for example, if an IP is hitting them too many times, it will, their script will in real time use Jabber to notify them, hey, somebody's snooping on us. Um, and uh, and so so they'll they'll react quickly to that. So if you're you know if you're at office and you're trying to study this group, you hit them uh, too many times, more than three or five times a day, your IP will get banned banned very quickly. Okay, so they have alert notification, uh, and you see they're using all the word abuse. Uh, they don't like being abused. Their TDS server has uh, changed IP only six times, um, and uh, URL passed only four times in the past 21 months. So they don't change the TDS IPs that often. Um, and so um, actually, and so sometimes we don't recognize their domains, and, it, and the domain um, is legitimate, but we always would recognize their TDS. If the TDS is happy, 
with the IP and with the visitor, it will redirect uh, to download malware. The malware will connect to the C2 server. The C2 servers, there's always a layer of nginx in front of the C2 servers. Uh, and the actual C2s are all located either in Russia or Ukraine. It only serves out, uh, it, it only runs uh, four to five different uh, malware command and control. So Asprox, Variants, Android, Pony, ADV. Um, and um, their command and controls, actually, they don't. They don't use compromised servers for command and controls. Uh, they go and rent them. And Nginx proxies in front. When they install these Nginx proxies uh, in front of their, to shield their uh, C2s, they also do decode to shield uh, their real command and control IP address. So, uh, and um, so when, you, when we find an Nginx server of theirs, one characteristic is they deliberately switch the error log and access log. For some reason, we don't know. Um, so, their, uh, so their error is actually logged at access.log and their access is logged at error.log. This is unique to Asprox. The other one is when they start their servers, this is the entire script. So when they start their servers, they will have their engine servers. They will have their actual command and control IP right here in the config file of the engine server. But as soon as the engine server is started, um, they will kill that file. They'll remove that file and they'll generate another config file pointing to a decoy IP. So if you happen to get into one of the engines, you look at the engine config file, that's a decoy IP. You never get the real IP because they delete the config file right after they start their server. Okay. So that's for the command and control. Um, aside from the Asprox malware family, they also run um, AdFraud. So they have a specialized AdFraud server where their um, the infected endpoints will have this file called URL viewer.dll. And what this DLL does is it will open up new tabs in your browser and, and direct the browser to some websites that are paying them per impression. And they make revenue by the impression count. And these are usually loans, fun, uh, loans or gam gambling, things like that. Um, and uh, we found about 32,000 bots of theirs uh, and uh, 167 tasks. Each task is a website paying them for the impression. So quite a lot of business in terms of tasks. So they have a different command and control panel to, uh, to control their infected endpoints to browse certain websites. Okay, and um, since June of 2014, what they started to do is open is also to serve um, Android APKs, and they were starting to build an Android botnet and just figuring out how to monetize from this Android botnet that they built. And they've found a few ways to monetize. Um, their Android malware supports basically these five features. Steal device info, steal contact info, SMS, GPS, and call recording. Okay. So um, during the short four months that we were um, able to study them before uh, the legal enforcement work with some of our colleagues to take them down, um, we saw about 500 Android users infected. That's not a big number, but uh, considering that they just started, the click rate, the conversion rate is more than 5%, which is pretty high for us. That means from somebody clicking to somebody actually getting infected, uh, for every 100 clicks, it's about more than five infections. So the conversion rate is actually pretty high. And here, what, uh, what you can do is um, this interface allows you to rent an Android bot. So you can, let's say you want uh, somebody's mobile phone in 
Bay Area in San Francisco. You can search, and if it, it says yes, I got somebody in San Francisco, you can rent and fully control that device for twenty bucks an hour. Um, so, so, uh, and it's pretty useful for targeted, uh, and, and they have been doing this. Uh, these uh, Russian gangs for some some time because it's very useful. Think about it, and they also the uh, some other gangs also rent um just infected PC. So like if you're trying to get into a bank, let's say Wells Fargo or Bank of America, um sometimes you get lucky. You Google for that IP range and there's infected endpoint. Then you don't need to hack your way in, right? You just rent that bot and you get in to the corporate network. Um, so here is the interface of um. Of, um, so you can click on every single bot, and here you'll see all of the SMS, and you can do that. Those five features, uh, you can get their GPS, you can get, you can download their contact, and things like that. And the last three SMS messages received by the bot is uh, by by that Android device is listed there. So this is the interface that you get if you pay twenty bucks an hour. Okay. Um. And in front of their Android command and control, uh, there is also a layer of Nginx. So to protect that uh, command and control, nine Nginx servers. And this is their, uh, con uh, their control panel for those nine Nginx servers, all shielding the real Android D2. They stole contacts themselves, uh, 750 or 1,000 or so uh, contacts. and. They steal these contacts because at that time they were also starting to spam out SMS. And these Android devices will help them spam out SMS. Um, and they also download people's SMS messages. Uh, I don't know why. For uh, they download more than a million messages. They also record people's locations, GPS locations, and from the phones, the contact, uh, the, con the directory on the phone allows them to. Uh, to harvest email. So they've got a lot of emails out of these phones as well. Physical addresses, they like to keep people's physical addresses if they can find them on their phone, probably to conduct some fraud. Phone numbers as well. Okay, and this is the interface. Again, phone, region, city, you can query and, and you can just rent a box. So comparing um, the uh, click statistics. Uh, you can see that the red ones are unwanted clicks. So the red ones are clicks to um, their, e uh, their PC-based uh, malware. And you can see that almost half of the malware downloads, they don't want. They will not give you anything. And I, I think it's because there are many vendors like us that have automated mechanisms that when every email comes in, we're going now to fetch whatever that URL has, right? And so they have blacklisted a lot of our IPs. Um, so that's about half. Uh, Android, much less. So um, about uh, three-fourths of Android clicks are always permitted. Uh, we don't know why. Maybe, maybe um, not many security vendors have um, Android skin. Their targets, they're very, very targeted. That's the nature of email campaigns. Um, you have to know the you have to know the region. You have to craft a good email for those recipients of that region. And so these are the only regions that they target. About a dozen countries, and that's it. Right? Japan is completely off the list. Taiwan, for example, we never have uh, asked rocks. Um, but US, Canada, um, just uh, the bigger economy. Okay, since uh, one of our colleagues worked with the uh, feds and uh, took them down in end of uh, 2014, people thought they disappeared. No, group is very active. They wouldn't spread malware anymore because they got busted, right? So they were really trying to figure out what to do next. And they started um, these email campaigns uh, mostly to... Um, to do um, to do weight loss and just some scams. Okay, so initially that was uh, what they did. So scams, selling fake drugs, weight loss drugs, things like that. And um, 
since April of uh, of 2015 until now, they found something to make money with, um, and uh, that is uh, fraudulent dating sites. Okay, um, so they spent their time to write these robots. Uh, so, so with these dating sites, you can pay for a VIP membership, then you can talk to the girl. You talk to their robots, <laughs> and these robots actually respond to you. Um, and so, so they spam out all of these emails, luring you to their um, dating online dating site, uh, which is better than Tinder, uh, and have their robots talk to you for a fee. So that's what uh, they do these days. Um, you have to verify your age. You have to be over eighteen, and the way you verify your age is to give them your credit card info. Uh, and they have VIP membership. Subscription auto renews at more than a hundred bucks per month, unless you explicitly cancel. So they're not dead. Um, they found some other ways to make money with their more than one billion targeted emails, um, and with their still a uh, big number of websites that help them send out spam. But they don't spread malware anymore. So, uh, counting their assets still owned by them so far, more than 3 million WSL web shells to legitimate websites, more than almost 8 million unique file names, um, 2 million SMTP accounts, half a million FTP accounts, 1,000 or so SSH root access, uh, 50,000 user, SSH user, a billion or so targeted email. So, Conclusion, um, they're very good with uh, their proxies and their TDSs. They're very picky about the visitor and who to serve, who to not to serve. Uh, they built their own market to acquire all of the assets that they use. Uh, they changed strategy from malware campaigns to email scams now. And uh, it seems that mass scale server compromise remains popular. Uh, we see them still. Um, acquiring large amounts of shared hosting admin um, from op uh, from compromise due to open source vulnerability. Okay, that's it. Hope you guys like it. Uh, do we have time for questions? <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are quite many people, very, very, sometimes very non-technical people. So I think uh, maybe a lot of them are like students, part-time, just trying to get a job somehow. And they probably have this standard procedure that they hand them and people just, just you know, follow the books through their job. Um, core, you know, good technical people. Say probably five, maybe not a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You can try. <laughs> you can try. How it will work. Probably will work until they shut down your account. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's decent money, I agree. Never thought of it. <laughs> I'll probably make a few hundred bucks before you try to do something. Yep. Um, in Russia, I think total about Maybe ten or so groups, just in Russia. Um, worldwide, I don't know, too too many. Yeah, yeah, we've seen really the the Middle East and Africa really picking up. Um, and I mean the Nigerians has been very good with email attacks, right? So, yeah, um, yeah, um. Yeah, so for their black market, we, we, we were able to, for a period of time, get access to their database servers. Just that they, they just don't have 
good security practices. Uh, it's it's actually pretty pretty easy to get in. Yeah. To know what? Oh, yeah. Doing this research, uh, Russian, uh, being able to read Russian is very important. And they uh, even, so we have Russian colleagues, but even with Russian colleagues, there's a lot of uh, slang used. So it's actually difficult. So language is actually pretty key in doing this research. All right, so I'll be here. I'll be around. Um, you can find me. Uh, all right, see you guys. Thank you for coming. <laughs>